Everybody stand up. Do you feel like you've been sitting for two days straight? I'm going to share a terrifying fact with you. If you have sat for more than six hours today, you're 40% more likely to die. I'm not going to go into uh, the how, but how. But just trust this demon chair infographic that I found on the internet. So now that you're up, please, I'm from the land of yoga and honey. So take a moment, do your favorite stretch, just reset. Let's just have a quick reset. It's a photo of us doing rooftop urban yoga in Portland, Oregon. Okay, now that you're up, you're going to find a new spot. It's going to be in this center area. Start by filling the first four rows. Have someone next to you. You should be next to someone. One of the people you are next to should be someone you don't know. So let's get together here. And I advise that you don't sit in the row with the projector or on the other side of the projector. So start by filling the front rows first, please. I see you guys are getting the point already. Social practice loves strangers, so please do introduce yourselves. And if you are both so inclined, optional, touch them. <laughs> Only if you're consenting adults, though. Love consent. Those of you who aren't moving to the middle are going to feel really sad so soon. And also, those of you who are in the row with the projector will also feel sad. Although, not participating is a choice. Non-participation is a form of participation. I'm just, I'm giving you a warning. You might feel sad if you're not in the middle part. You can omit the stranger touching. All right. So uh, I had a lot of friends who were super uncomfortable about this. Here's a quote from Nicole Laval. I was going to tell you that there's a rival engagement conference, but then I saw that you were speaking at it. Uh, and then some other friends were like, oh yeah, I saw that thing and I just didn't want to talk to you about it. Like, that's so weird. Uh, anyhow, so I do organize a conference, the Rival Engagement Conference, uh, open engagement. It's been going on since 2007, and we're about to head into our seventh iteration that will happen in Pittsburgh this April, and the call for submissions is still open. I would love to continue this conversation with some of you if you are so inclined in Pittsburgh. The theme is Place and Revolution, and we have some amazing keynote presenters, Rick Lowe, who we've heard a lot about this weekend, as well as an artist that I truly deeply admire and respect as well, Emily Jasser. So at, uh, at the conference, we like to encourage unorthodox forms. Here we are, shaking it off, standing in a circle. We also like touching each other at the conference. Here's a, an image of that. It's led by future farmers. We also sit in circles. We've done some of that this, this weekend. And we also like to sit in this formation. I'm really trying to breeze through this clearly because we're running a little late and I really just want to dig in and have a conversation with all of you guys. So 
please do feel free to talk to me more in depth about anything that I'm going over this afternoon. Okay, so this is my tweetable takeaway. These conversations are finally happening. You know, when I organized open engagement in 2007, it was really because I felt like there wasn't a space for these conversations to happen. There wasn't a place for us to come together. And it felt a little bit ironic, so many of us being artists working in embedded contexts, very much involved with communities, it didn't make sense to me that we didn't have a place for our own community to gather. And so I'm happy to see gatherings like this. I joke when I say this is a rival gathering. You know, in fact, there's another conference on socially engaged art happening right now, this very moment, in Chicago. That's how much the conversation is really moving forward. And I do believe that what's really needed is sustainable support for socially engaged art moving forward. And I'd love for us to really, yeah think about how that's possible. We're all working hard to find ways in our own lives to, to make these things happen, but you know, it'd be great if um, it wasn't always such a struggle and if we could really help each other do that. Because this work is important work. I'm sure you really feel that after this weekend of presentations. So I'm gonna share a quote from agitator, radical, all around amazing dude, Saul Alinsky, and uh, he he said this, actually you do more organizing with your ears than with your tongue and I felt very happy to be asked to be a respondent because it put me in a role that I really like to be in and that is a listener. So I've been listening in this weekend, I've been trying to listen to all of you on social media, you probably think I'm a maniac who's addicted to the internet with all of my pleas for you to join me online. Um, there was some participation, not that much. You can feel free to go back through the archives though and see those things that were generated there and I've tried to pull from some of the people who did engage in those conversations as well as the things that I heard in the sessions. All right, this is my chance to have an Oprah moment. Look under your seats, everyone, look under your seats. If you're in the rows I told you not to be in, you might be sad, there might be nothing under your seat. That's right, you get a sign, you get a sign, you get a sign, you all get signs. You got a sign, it's a sign, it's a sign. Yes. <laughs> Surprise! Thanks for the folks uh, who came in early and helped me do that this morning. Okay, so at this point, you have a smiley face. You have a yes, opposite side of the smiley face. Frowny face, you've got, you've got that. And uh, no, you've got no, opposite side. So we're gonna use these signs to do some polling. Uh, the first thing I would like to do is a little poll that the organizers could maybe even use as their exit survey. You know, just like, how was it? How, how are you guys feeling? Let's get a vibe check. If you don't wanna be in a picture, just put the happy face right over your own happy face. You know, cause I'm gonna take a picture so they can get a, a count here. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, you're actually all ready, thank you. Okay, so this is gonna be part recap and also, it's gonna be a, there's gonna be some more participation. If you thought that was really getting you going, just wait till you see what's in store. So day one, uh, it's gonna be a lot of what I attended since I wasn't able to get a sense of the other sessions on social media. Which public sphere, really amazing conversations generated out of this session. 
uh, Impossible Wants, a really beautiful poetic project. Also, these are very helpful people who came in this morning. Beautiful project by Barbara. I see her in the back. I love your hair. haven't had a chance to tell you that. And really thank you to SPAN for starting us off on this note of conversation and really bringing that group together into dialogue. Really appreciated that. I heard Jules say this. You might be here. I think I saw you. We were smiling at each other. There you are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I'm interested in sharing resources. I think we all are as well. And this was one of the questions that one of the questions that came up actually was how do you do what you do? And so I would love if we could get a mic runner and just put five minutes on the clock and have people answer this question from that session, and that is, how do you get people involved? You know, please do speak from your own practice or any other kinds of experiences that you have, and just speak to this question of how, in your own work, what are some of your strategies? How do you get people involved? I'm going to set the timer now. I'd love to hear strategies for how she gets people involved. Conversation. Speak from the heart and connect urgency to the planet situation. Pre, pre alcohol. It's <laughs> a very important one. We ask people questions. I was actually just waiting for the free alcohol. Sorry. <laughs> Drew likes it. Drew likes the free alcohol. We, we invite them. Uh, beg and then uh, not take no for an answer and just keep begging. Yes, yeah, snacks. Snacks, <laughs> oh, yes. Being open to change. Music. Mm -hmm. Sharing comfort food. Touch issues close to their hearts. Mm -hmm. Going to their events. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Classic. Um, figure out the real reasons why people don't get involved, mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable getting involved. I'm going to disagree on something we've realized recently is no alcohol, because alcohol actually excludes a lot of people from mm. the room. One-on-one -on -one conversations that talk about their fears about getting involved and listening to those fears. Going to them. Mm -hmm. Being present. I'll let, let people take some ownership of the project. Mm. Not so easy to do, but non-judgmental listening. We had a good session in that earlier today. The pedagogy group let us in. Craftsmanship. Deprive them of comfort. <laughs> New strategies. Tra transparency. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, we got one more up here. Working within existing networks. Anyone else before we move on? Oh, we got one over there, end of the line. Be contagious in a positive ma manner. Great. All right. Thank you all. So this was something that Shannon Jackson said also in that morning session that Carol asked uh, for us to return to uh, from SPAN. And Shannon said, there are people in this network, and this is paraphrasing, pardon, Shannon. Uh, there are people in this network who are moving and traveling, doing gigs, dropping into communities. And there are people who are in communities bringing people in, for example, uh, John Spiak. Are there any ways to mess up this dynamic? How can we change this? up. So 
What I would like to propose is to bring up three volunteers, someone who wants to kind of speak about what they see as the value of this embedded, staying put kind of model, maybe someone like a group like Transformasium that was just brought up in this session, uh, versus maybe artists that travel and do shorter term projects. And then I'd love to hear someone maybe propose this what is the other thing model, the model that gets away from this. Do we have any takers, three brave souls, willing to risk 120 seconds on the line in front of a lot of smiley faces. We got one, great. Oh yes, what's your position? Who are you gonna, what position are you gonna take? You're breaking out of the dynamic, okay. Anyone for embedded communities working? Okay, so breaking out of the dynamic would be neither the dropping in and out of community model or not the embedded, you work long term in a community, but trying to propose something that works against those existing kind of poles. You're going to go embedded. We've got the embedded community perspective. Someone's going to make a proposal for that as a, as a mode of working. Any other takers? breaking out of the dynamic, the something else altogether. Yeah. All right, we, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now dropping in and dropping out. I hope that wasn't a nervous tick and now you're just on the line. I'm just like, you could. We have a plane seat at this party. Oh, bye you two. Thank you, great. Come on up, you three. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make an argument for uh, dropping in and dropping out. Um, and I, I think that all of these projects take um, energy and sort of the maximum amount of energy that you can apply to something um, is, is really its key to success. The problem with being someplace over the long time is that dissipates. And so there's something about being able to go in, ideally with a support structure, and, and to uh, apply maximum energy to the task at hand. That's my argument. Thank you. Well, there. Okay, sorry. I can probably yell loud enough or speak loud enough. Um, okay, if I can do this carefully. Um, it has to do with not starting over again and again and again, which is my big issue with a lot of things happening in Cleveland is we're always starting at the beginning, we're always starting at that introductory level. So the idea of sustainability, the idea of development, the idea of um, actually getting better and better at something rather than kind of like doing the same thing again and again and again, staying on the same level. I would argue that embedded approaches support that. I'll say that. Thank you. That's 30 seconds on the nose. Okay, so mine's easy because it says we can have all of that. Um, uh, <laughs> which is actually what we're trying to do. So that um, Brett said about um, the support structure. So what is that? What is it that stays? And we did a symposium in London just recently about staying. And initially when we were, which is something that we've, we've been asking what happens when we stay for the last eight years in this small neighborhood. Me saying 30 seconds, can I have one minute? And we well, kind of thought for quite a few years that it was just about time. It was just about how long you stayed. But then these issues about, yes, you get knackered, or yes, you, you, you know, what, what happens, and is just being there for a long time but not knowing what you're doing important. So in our little symposium about staying this summer, there were several really fantastic 
um, curators and artists talking about how they'd stayed in different places, and some of them were for a very long time. David Harding talking about his Glen Rothy's Town Artist Project, 1968 to 1978, an unpublished but brilliant piece of work. Uh, or a, a colleague in London, Andrea Zimmerman, who's just... Oh, another minute, they didn't use theirs. <laughs> where she has been living in an estate for 18 years and been making a film for the last eight, and it's just compl completed now. But one of the um, speakers came from a small project in rural Scotland called Deveron Arts, and I really like the way they, they've just got this very clearly. They call it a 50-50 approach. And everything they do, so it's whether they're financing, whether they're, I mean, I don't know, it goes into the really the reaches of how they organize things, but also in terms of artists who they work with, partners. So they know that in this little, very remote, quite so sort of isolated in many obvious ways community, that if they just work with themselves, um, they will just get utterly tired and, and boring. Whereas if they bring in, and they've, they've had everyone from um, Jane, um, Mary Jane Jacob coming over, so people internationally coming to the place, and then the work can go back out into the world. So there's always this kind of 50-50 exchange. So maybe that's enough. Thank you. Thank you. So let's get a sense of where people are. And it can be maybe reflecting your own practice, how you are working yourself. Or maybe your mind has been changed. You're going to switch teams, try something else. Uh, strategy one. How did you guys feel about strategy one? Is it Yeah. That was Brett. <laughs> Brett making a case for dropping in and dropping out. All right. Strategy two, the embedded community, the long haul approach. A lot of people, a lot of people into the long haul. I like it. Monogamous community arts relationships, just <laughs> making it work over the long run. So good. All right. And then something all to something different altogether. Yeah, a lot of Okay. Okay, so I don't see Ben and, oh, there you are. Yeah, okay, you're just not next to each other. So Friday, we had a great presentation from Ben and Jessica. This was my most liked photograph on Instagram of, of the weekend. So congratulations. <laughs> this is hilarious stuff. Uh, so I'm proposing something here in the spirit of the Jenks archive and the wisdom of put downs who are two people in this audience who just feel like they've got a wealth of put downs that they just want to throw down at somebody else two people on stage if no one volunteers it's Ben and Jessica <laughs> yeah we've got yes Come on up. No? Great. First of all, this place is so dirty and dusty, the roaches ride around in dune buggies. <laughs> and the ideas are so old and stanky that they owe Jesus a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> now, considering, uh, I'm not sure if a lot of you understand, or dis I wasn't here earlier, discuss the roots of this kind of framing of insult as to be rooted in, uh, let's say, so-called marginalized cultures that are really at the center. And if... Um, the world was disenfranchised, colonized, and folks were lifted up out of one country and brought to another. They didn't just steal the people, they stole the culture. And that's not very often acknowledged. And that's an economic issue of currency that doesn't filter back 
to the artists and the creators that are everywhere amongst us. As Ginsburg said, there's an artist on every block. We're talking and, and deal with maybe and 1% of the creative voices and visions and sussing them out or being able to recognize them everywhere and anywhere um, is key. So next time you go to a conference, understand the real place you are in, the locale, the neighborhood, the history, take a look at that. And don't assume place can always be brought to a place, to a space, as the place Sun Ra said. And I guess I'm running out of time. The other thing is um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, literally. And that's not always so clear until later on in life. And so anything, it's, it's unnatural. Growth is unnatural, for one thing. But it's also unnatural that um, change is predicated on the young and what they do. I think that's part of the problem. So then where is the insight and the wisdom and the lessons learned that time and experience um, clarify? And so if things are not more mixed up than this, more a jumble, then we're in trouble. And it's the same old, same old. And like Tina said, we're just spinning. I wouldn't have known that as a 70s kid. But circling again around the same issues of, of uh, the ruling class and what filters down and who's left out. That's it. All right. There's not a second round of applause. No. We're, we're super flexible here. OK. So Vague Research Studios, love your name. If you're still there, yeah, great. I really liked this quote from Drew from that session. As designers, we have to quantify the value of being thoughtful. It was really some nice work. And a lot of my design students in Portland favorited that. They liked it. Alison Schwann, not sure if she's still here. Another stellar presentation. And one of my favorites got brought up uh, yesterday, Paul Ramirez Jonas and his Taylor Square Cambridge project uh, by Jeffrey Kruth in his Seeking Alternative Commons. So I wasn't able to attend this session, and I'm not sure if uh, the, the issue I'm about to bring up came up, but it was suggested to me on Facebook. This is also something that I received from a friend on Facebook that is illustrative of the issue. And if there is anyone who wants to speak in particular to this, I mean, this can be just a quick you know, two minutes of passing the mic. If anyone wants to weigh in on this response I got from the internet void via Ben Kinsley, he thinks that this would be a great thing for us to talk about this you know, what to do when a thoughtful, socially engaged political artwork comes up against this misunderstanding, uh, misreception, these challenges. So the question, you know, if we can go around, if anyone wants to speak to this, is what do we do when these practices are misunderstood, met with resistance and hostility? Does anyone have any thoughts from their own experience or if they want to speak to what's happening with Conflict Kitchen? It'd be great to hear some thoughts from all of you. Is that mic still? Oh, it's right over there. Let me set a timer and come on down. So I think it's a great moment for more dialogue and more, you know, sites of understanding. Maybe I can clarify what happened with the Conflict Kitchen a little bit, which is, um, uh, so Conflict Kitchen is a restaurant that um, was brought up at the, I think the first talk. Uh, in Pittsburgh by John Rubin and Don Molesky, which serves food from countries that are the United States is in conflict with in different ways. And they've had a variety of different countries. Foods, Afghan, Afghanistan, food from Afghanistan, North Korea, Iranian cuisine. Currently, and the thing that exploded really with this restaurant was the Palestinian version. Um, and it's always kind of on a, they did Venezuelan as well, it's always kind of a, a present issue. And um, what, what they do each time is they interview lots of people from that country, people who live in Pittsburgh, so the Pittsburgh community, as well as people 
so in United States, people who live in the United States, as well as people who live in that country, about the issues. So it's not necessarily, uh, it's different viewpoints. They try to show a variety of viewpoints from people from that country, in that country, and without that, outside of that country. And so what happened with the Palestinian version is all a lot of the news outlets that even the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, um, who covered that, they, they under, they, uh, Conflict Kitchen did a lot of work to communicate all of this. They had their questions that the Post-Gazette gave them. They gave them all these answers, and the Post-Gazette chose to only uh, uh, publish half of the side of the argument. So they, it was like stilted. So it's sort of like what happens when the media chooses to not um, to misrepresent your project on purpose, even though they have all of that information. So I don't really know. It's really messy, and it um, they got death threats today, so they closed so down that temporarily. That takes us to the end of Friday. There's been quite a bit of discussion on online about uh, Caroline and Susan's project, BFA, MFA, PhD. Too much to start a discussion here, but I did really like what Caroline said. When you become committed to a movement like student debt, group work becomes obvious. This is a, another fantastic session. Really enjoyed this talk by Tina looking at student movements in Montreal and beyond. So some really, this was in the pedagogy group. Uh, this one really talked a lot about their curriculum and community engaged curriculum and some of their students were working in a senior center and this other group was working in a food bank. Uh, the alternative strategies to art education, the alternative art college was another great one. This was a meme from their website, very related. This got a great laugh. She unfortunately left. Uh, she showed this slide of a brick wall and said, and then dreams meet reality. I'm talking about the challenge of proposing really alternative structures within academia. And this is another great quote from that session. Transformative curricula should examine the nature of the educational crisis as a whole. So I'm going to leave you guys with some homework. And Caroline Willard ended the session by saying that starting a pedagogy group in your own area is not hard to do. So if anyone was inspired by that session, if you're thinking about uh, socially engaged art, these practices, community engaged art, and education, reach out to other people in your area and start a group and start sharing, start meeting. It's really it's easy. And they are very open. If you were to email them or check out um, their resources online, they'd be more than happy to share their tools and tips for facilitation and how things have gone for them. And I will leave you with another meme. This one was created by my friend Randall Zott, especially for this occasion, <laughs> just for you guys. So thank you. You're released. My God, it's been so long. I'm, get up. Yeah. <laughs> Captivating. Feel free to keep the signs or recycle them.